Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes. We're hey, on. everybody. What's going on? What's Thanks happening, for girl? Oh, girl. Making it through the week. You know, it's hump day for us, so. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we talking about navigating grief. Yes. Oh, nice. Um, if anybody are is um, dealing with grief right now, please share this podcast. We're going to break down grief, the different stages, different solutions. Um, Nikki really going to help us today to go super deep. So, Nikki, yeah. you mind going? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Um, thank you guys again for joining us and sharing, liking, loving, all that commenting. Make sure that you put messages in the chat and we'll get to them when we can. We'll end it with a Q&A and all of that. So hopefully this will be very, very beneficial. Actually, I know it's going to be very beneficial to you guys. So we're going to start out with just talking about grief and, um, you know, the definition of it, which is grief is just a natural response mm -hmm. to a significant loss. So a lot of times when we think about grief, we think in terms of losing a loved one. But sometimes it can be losing a pet. It can be losing you know, someone, um, something, it could be losing a job, it could be losing, you know, a car, what you, na you name it. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about grief, there are some stats, and I think you're going to put that up for everybody to see. Yep, here we go. So 2.8 million deaths each year um, happen in the U.S., and that's according to the CDC. So we're all dealing with grief in some way or another, and so that's mm -hmm. just something just to highlight. And then 10 to 20% of people who experience grief, experience prolonged grief. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So make sure you stay tuned and plugged in because we're going to break down the difference between prolonged and complicated grief. There's two different types there. And then Nina, I think you're going to talk to us about a different type of grief as well. So we'll have plenty mm -hmm. of you know options to look at that. And then one more stat is 4.1% of U.S. adults mm -hmm. deal with anxiety and depression due to the pandemic. So the pandemic has really caused a lot of people to have to experience grief on a whole nother level, um, you know, than we've ever done before. So, uh, so this is, I think this is, I feel like it's a message that is very important for so many people um, to be able to know exactly what it is that they're dealing with or have dealt with the definition of it and how to cope. You know, that's why I'm glad that we're doing this so we can share with people some different tools and strategies to help them out. Mm, yes yes that's true mm -hmm. and um i know like it's even different types of griefs out here that a lot of people don't even talk about i know right. um the one that i was just telling you about before we got started which is yeah. very very common is mm -hmm. uh, called the collective grief so right. i have a definition right here um, we don't have a slide on but we do have a definition so collective collective grief happens when a community society village or nation of all ex at all people experience change or loss collective grief can manifest in in the wake of majority events such as war um, natural disaster or others that result in mass massive um widespread tra tragedy so mm -hmm. like say for instance something that's very common that a lot of people can um, relate to uh, like the death of like nipsey hustle right a lot of people didn't know this person, but he impacted them so much to the point where they experienced a grief that was so powerful that it felt like it, it felt like they were grieving from somebody that they knew. You yeah. know, like they didn't personally know him, but he inspired them so deeply that it really, really traumatized a lot of people and hurt a lot of people that until this day they're still grieving. Right. I like Whitney Houston too. I know. Oh, yeah. Shock, and then Ooh, Whitney was a big mm -hmm. I know. And the way she died as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like I know um another thing when I was like researching about like Nipsey Hustle, mm -hmm. like I know like um Kobe Bryant all of them was big too. But like check this stat out. So um, for those that don't know who Nipsey Hustle is, um Hustle was a hip hop artist, a father of two, widely beloved in South LA, located he was like born there, born and raised. Um, he was um, 33 years old, and this man, he used to um, be in like a gang. He used to be a crip and everything, but he decided to change his life around and really invest into music, and then he became an activist of gun violence and gang violence. So, like, his life was so empowering, and then on top of that, he took it to the next level where 
where he really started investing in the community, giving back, mm. and then studying mm. what um uh, what's his name, Doctor um, Sebi. Yeah. yeah, he was mm -hmm. working on a documentary with him. Okay. You know, so it's this guy. A lot of people can relate to him, especially in the black community. We can relate. We see this this black figure figure that came from you know the hood, and he came up, and he's doing good. Doing people on the way. Yes, he the helped community. his people. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Like, well, you know, there is a um, and I didn't know this, but in California and Los Angeles, he created a entrepreneur center. Yes. And it's, I believe it's called Vector 90. And so it still wow. exists to this day. I had gone over there and I did a tour and it's all for entrepreneurs. Wow. It's like a, a shared space where people can go. You can have office space there. Or what yeah. have you? It is so. We have to go out there one time and, and check it out. Yeah, we definitely you know, because like this this guy see. is amazing. But mm -hmm. it's crazy how, and this this is not just him. I'm just using him as an example, right? But like this man did all these great things, right? But a lot of people said they know who he, who he was. Mm -hmm. But the moment he got murdered, right, and it was captured on camera, mm -hmm. it went viral. Wow. It went viral. He had over 1.5 million accounts share his death, right? They call oh, it wow. trauma porn. They, they shared his death all around the world, right? And after Instagram and Facebook deleted this video, 300,000 people still shared it. Mm, mm -hmm. He was more known when he passed away compared to when he was alive. Wow. That like legacy. Yeah, like it's crazy. Like even like Young Dolph, a lot of people didn't know who that was. Um, I feel like everybody know my, Michael Jackson. But of like course. even like the the death of Kobe Bryant, a lot of people they didn't know who Kobe was, but they they related to the story so deeply because he died with his daughter and on top of the the pilot, the pilot, and then the family. Like that grief, it resonates so deeply with people. So I, I remember when I heard about his death, about Kobe's death, I was in yeah. church in Los Angeles, you know, and I actually was listening. It was um one church community, one mm -hmm. church, uh, one church wow. in Potter's house. And so anyway, I was in church and then all of a sudden the pastor comes out and says it. And I'm like, everybody just, I mean, everybody's freaking out. They're screaming in church. I didn't and believe like, it. <laughs> I didn't believe it. I thought they was messing with us. Nobody like, did. Because it's so tragic. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's so ah. sad. But that's right. where, like, like, I didn't have people where I have friends that was girlfriends. Um, mm -hmm. Like, they, they boyfriend was grieving Kobe's death. But they didn't understand it. They didn't even take it seriously. Mm. They're like, how can you grieve somebody that's that that you're not related to or you don't even know, right? Mm. But we that's have to start. Yeah, we got to start taking this stuff seriously. Like collective grieving need to be a thing because a lot it, we got all these rappers and artists and all these amazing people like Maya Angelou, like all these people passing away. That's and right. when they pass away, our people still need to be treated kindly with respect. So right. All of these steps that we're going to break down today, I feel like we should still follow them when someone is suffering from collective grieving as well. Absolutely. So that's why I want to use that example because that's a type of grieving that a lot of people are not familiar with and a lot of people don't take seriously. And I just think it's unfair. Right. And you know, the pandemic is another one I would say would be an example of collective grief. Oh, yeah. With, you know, everybody as a nation, we're dealing with, you know, loss at the same time in different mm -hmm. ways. You know, yes. um, I remember I lost my pet in the pandemic oh. and I ended up, you know, putting um, Sasha was her name. Rest in peace, baby. But anyway, I know. Sorry, cool. She was a little Yorkie. But anyway, but the thing is, is that she got ran over. I had get put her in the care of one of my friends. And when my friend called me, she is bawling her eyes out about it. And I felt so bad for her. So I'm grieving for her. Then I'm grieving for myself and, you know, my family and everything like that. And so people don't re recognize or realize that there are pet moms and pet dads that, it, you know, it's really yeah. difficult when these pets, um, when we lose pets as well. So it's any significant mm -hmm. loss you can grieve from. You know, yeah. loss of a job. <laughs> Mm -hmm. People grieve losing jobs, losing friends, losing items like a car. Like right. people get a car accident, like wow, that was my first car. Like I spent losing a business. Yeah, oh, yeah. losing a business, business in the one. pandemic. You know how many people lost their businesses? 
yeah. in the pandemic. I mean, bankruptcy, you name it. So it's, yeah, it's definitely something that we all experience on a global level. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to break down the stages. Yeah, I'm say, please really know. do that. Yeah. So people don't really know the stages. So there's five stages of grief. The first one is denial. So, and this is the thing I tell the people I work with a lot of times, the grief does not have to, the stages don't have to come mm-hmm. in order. Like sometimes you may be in one stage longer than the other, or they may go out of order. You may experience one stage mm-hmm. again, and you've already gone through that. So the first one is denial. So denial, you may ask yourself this question or say this, that this can't be happening to me. Like, why is this happening to me? I don't understand. Um, it's almost as if you don't believe it. Kind of like what we were talking about earlier, you know, when we heard some of the deaths, especially with collective grief that, you know, as a nation we dealt with, it's almost like unbelievable. So that's denial. Then after denial, we have anger. So anger is when you get upset, you're mad. You're like, I can't believe this, but I'm, I'm pissed off about this situation that I'm having to experience this right now in my life. And from there, we move into bargaining. So bargaining is like, okay, I'll do anything to be able to prevent myself from going through this. And so it's one of those things where you're, you know, you may go to bed at night, you wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, when I open my eyes tomorrow, please let this not be true. Mm -hmm. Well, you're in the stage of bargaining because you want to basically act like this experience didn't happen and you don't want to have Mm -hmm. to go through it. Um, So from bargaining, then we deal with depression, which is the last stage of grief. And um, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, not the last, the, the second to last. But um, depression is, you know, just what we know, right? You're sad. You can't really get out of bed. You know, you're just crying all the time. You may not feel like going to work. You may not feel like doing anything. Um, So that's depression. And the very last stage is acceptance. And when you get to acceptance, Mm -hmm. there's something called radical acceptance, which means you accept, accept things as they are without judgment. So you understand that this has happened. You understand that it's not fair. You don't have to love it or like it. But you accept that it's a part of your narrative that you have to navigate now. And Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, again, the important thing to know is if you're listening and you are like, okay, what stage am I in? Or if I feel like I've been in anger for a really long time, then Mm -hmm. just be patient with yourself because it does take time. And sometimes you will stay longer than you want to in a certain stage. That's why it's important to be aware Mm -hmm. of what stage you're in Um, so you can shift out of those stages and, you know, get the help that you need. For sure. Wow. So, Nikki, by you being a, a therapist, what when it comes to people following these stages, right? Mm-hmm. Which stage do you have you noticed that people often get stuck in the most? Anger. Mm. And why is that? You think? Um, just not they don't want to move to acceptance yet, and and sometimes I feel like we can get into this zone as U.S. citizens, Americans, whatever that we are comparing ourselves to somebody else's life, you know, and it's like, okay, well, I'm having to go through this significant loss. I'm in pain here and nobody else is dealing with this or we think that. And, you know, it's important too. And I'll I'll put this little plug in there that sometimes, you know, people are going to deal. It could be someone in the same family Mm. dealing with the same loss and they're going to be, have a different response than you have to what they're, what you're going through. And I know that because when I went, you know, even a divorce is a loss. Right. So I went through my divorce. I was able to look at each of my children, even the twins. You know, they Mm -hmm. have pretty much the same DNA. Um, But even them, I was able to look at them each and say, okay, this is in me being a therapist and a mom raising. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is how this person, you know, this particular my son's dealing with this. This is how Mm -hmm. this twin is dealing with this. This is how that twin is dealing with it. And I was able to see what stages they were in and and help them. I try my best to help them move through those stages as quickly as possible. But I would say anger, sometimes denial, especially when it first happened. Yeah. Depression. Depression is a big one. People get stuck there, too. So it's important to, you know, as we always talk about you and I both, you know, when we coach people, it's like, okay, move your body, do that Mm -hmm. trauma release, you know, dance it out, exercise, you know, all those things that you can do to take care of yourself. Yeah, because I definitely know, like, for me, I dealt with, like, a lot of grief, like, throughout my whole life. Mm-hmm. And that's what um, I realized, um, that's what caused me to become numb, because you get so used to losing people. Yeah. And then, next thing you know, you end up losing yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the scary part. And then it's hard for you to have real relationships with other people 
because you like, what's the point of creating this relationship with this other human being if they're going to leave me too? That part. That mm -hmm. part. That's so yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what, which one do you think out of the stages you think you had, you were in when you felt that way? Anger. Now, Definitely. Yeah. I felt like anger, uh -huh. you know, was powerful. Like when I was younger, right, I was in anger for so long because mm -hmm. at a certain point, I felt like that's what helped me survive. Okay. Like I rather felt anger than sadness. Mm -hmm. The sadness, I felt like I was caving in and my body was just like, woo. It just felt right. like you got to have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. But anger, once you learn how to work with anger, which I learned as an adult, right. like, anger is not terrible. It's all about how you use that anger. It's like, don't stay in that anger for too long. But when you are in that anger, use that anger to help you push forward and do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that anger can help you get out of that depression. That's you, true. Of yeah, I like how you said that because it almost as if it causes you to take action because you're just so mm -hmm. mad. It's like I'm gonna do something, and you yeah. know, you know, a lot of times it's something that is gonna be positive that you do yeah. outside of that. It's like you want to move past it so fast. So, yeah, yeah, I think yes. that's really good. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's also good. Like the other things a lot of people don't talk about is um, what to say or what not to say to a person that's grieving, right? Yes. So yeah. I wanted to go over that real quick. So people can have an example. So I'm about to pull up this slide. All right, guys. So if you have like a pen and paper or just take note and really pay attention to this, what not to say to someone grieving, right? I would say like the first thing is I know how you, how you feel. It's impossible to know how everyone is feeling. Everyone is different. And like when you do that, it's like you, you're with them in that situation. You're sitting with them and you're being with them and you're not judging them. And you're not expecting them to act a certain way, you know? So I think that's very important, too, is allow people to grieve how they want to grieve and just be there and support them and listen to them without judgment. Another one I would say is right here. It's time to move on. It, it, it takes time. Like, who are you to tell them what's the time limit on grieving? Right. You know, don't rush nobody to to grieve like who are you to say that like that's so selfish like everybody got a time limit everybody everybody get, uh, has their own process allow them to be in that process and when you allow them to be in that process without judging them mm -hmm. then more than likely they end up getting out of the grieving process quicker than you expect and even if they don't just be there with them in that moment love on them a lot of times we become impatient with our loved ones because we don't have patience for ourselves. Right. So you really want to do that. Another one, at least they're in a better place now. Okay, but they're not here with me. <laughs> like, right. you know, people don't want to, like, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to mm -hmm. hear that. Okay, yes, I know they're somewhere else, but at that moment, at that time, they want them close. So the last thing they want to hear is that they're in a better place now. Okay. Um, everything happens for a reason. They wouldn't want you to be sad. You should be over it by now. It's time to start dating again. <sighs> a lot of this, if you notice, when you look at it, it's so self-centered. Because it's but you know, it's I feel like people don't really know what to say. No, they don't. It. And that, that I've been in that situation though, where it's like, okay, yeah. you feel for the person, you love the person, you care about the yeah. person, and you don't know what to say to help them feel better. Yeah. So sometimes you, you know, the best thing for me, what I say is don't say anything mm -hmm. other than I'm here if you need me. So sometimes yeah. that means like you just sitting next to the person. It's like, I'm not going to say anything. I don't oh, think you, know, you want me to say something, then let me know. But I just want to let you know that I'm here, sitting right here next yeah. to you helping yes. you in any way that I can, wanted to help you in any way that I can. So, you yes. know, I, I feel like when I think about that list, there's times that I've said, you know, um, I know how you feel like that is, yeah. you want the person to know you're compassionate, but here's the thing, yeah. kind of going back to my children, they don't, you know, they didn't even know how they're feeling, you know? So it's like, yeah. you can't say that you know how the person feels because you're not that person. Yeah. It's completely different. A lot of times it's like you, I feel like a lot of times us, what we do is we try to put ourselves in their shoes 
And like we resonate with them so much. And it just hurt to see our, it's so hard to see our loved ones suffering. Right. Like you just want them to get, you don't want to see them like that. So you're no. like, what can I do to get them out of this? Like what's yeah, the quick quit. thing? I wanted to, like, I'm just trying to bring them peace. You know, so it's like, even though it may seem like, you know, you being selfish and stuff like that, you just want the best for them. Like your intentions is pure and right. stuff. But it's just like, we, that's why we're here, Nikki. We're here to that's help you to provide our people the right thing to say, the right thing to do, to mm -hmm. help you have a healthy healing lifestyle because you can accomplish, you can manifest, you can have everything that you want to have. But if you do not, if you are not ready or prepare for all the things you're praying for or manifesting, you're going to lose it. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose it. And that's why we're here to help provide you with the tools and the skill sets that you need. So you can keep those things that you work so hard for and you pray for and that you ask for. Absolutely. Well, you know, here's my thing. This is what I say to people all the time. So if anybody's out there, hey, Kika, our girl Kika's here. Hey, and, Kika. Um, yes. <laughs> and Billy Carson. Thank you guys for, for tuning yes. in. But my thing is this. Mm -hmm. If you lose something, you had yeah. to have had it at some point. Woo! You lose something. Yeah, if you yes. Yes. So sometimes, yeah, let's, let's, you know, look, sometimes look, look. it's a matter of acknowledging that gratitude piece, right? Even if you had it for a day, there was a lady I was working with one time and she had a miscarriage. She had had several miscarriages mm, wow. and you know, that's tough. I mean, it's yeah. tough. So what I told her though, what I shared with her is that, cause she still wanted to try, oh, which I was like, good. Hmm. I wanted her to continue to try to have a child. But yeah. I said this to her. I said, the fact that you got pregnant, even though you lost your child, the fact that you got pregnant multiple times to me, mm. maybe you can focus on the fact that you were able to conceive. So it's not like you're not Ooh. able to conceive, yes. but yes. it's just that yes. you weren't yes. able to carry full term. So how about this? How about set that meditation, that intention, that belief that you can carry full term now? You, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. hey, Krista, that's my girl. Yes, yes thank you. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so here's a, you know, I feel like when we're talking about grief, it's so heavy and it's something mm -hmm. that we all can relate to. So yes. We've all lost something, but if we spend time also being grateful for the fact that we experienced it, mm -hmm. you know, if you lost a marriage, you lost um, somebody in your life that passed away, they mm -hmm. were in your life at one point. Yes. And there were many good things that you probably experienced with them. So focus on that doesn't make it any easier, mm -hmm. but at least you can have that to, you know, to think about and to, yeah. to be happy about that you had that experience. With mm. them. I love that. I love that so much because what I had, I know me personally, I experienced a lot of death at a young age. Mm. So one thing that I would definitely say is with every, with every loss that you have in life, there's a lesson. Mm. right there's a lesson that's meant to learn with every loss on top of is something that you can gain from it once you mm -hmm. understand and learn that loss right. like it's hard for you to understand it right there in that moment at that time because you're so stuck in your emotions and your feelings because you hurting right you know but after you get through that storm mm -hmm. right and that pain away like from it through, you can okay. work from it. You can see the beautiful lesson that's given mm -hmm. to you, and the it's, it's the blessings in it. And sometimes it's just a mere lesson of it's a cliche, but life is short. Yes, like, enjoy the moment. Yes. You know? Yeah, see, I feel like even, even even like say perfect example like with the Kobe Bryant and his daughter, right? Mm -hmm. How many people you think went home hugging their kids? Thank how many, you. How yes. many fathers no do you true. think? How many fathers do you think really got up and was like, y'all need to spend time with my kid? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For like sure. Even, like even like the other tragedies with, with the school shootings and stuff, right? Right. That was so hard. Another example of collective grief. Collective grief. Right. Right? As a community, and we definitely. That yeah. was, you know what a lot of people did? They kept their kids at home. They did. The kids kept staying at home. Maybe where the kids should be at anyways but it's hard right. for parents to really like educate their kids at home we got a lot going on but yeah you know, they have to work and all kinds of stuff man the parents got the loving on their kids so much it made them appreciate their kids lives like yes sometimes our kids can drive us crazy 
right? They can right. travel up the wall. Yeah, and like, in there. Their mind. Like, y'all need to break for them, which is fine. But, like, sometimes things like that, it brings us closer. And it makes us better parents. Because mm-hmm. I know I have sisters that have lots of kids. And I really feel like that, that, that very sad event, that tragic event, brought them closer to their kids and made them love on their kids more. You know, made them even be more cautious and more attentive to what's going on in their schools. Mm-hmm. You know, and made it created these conversations that they never even had with their kids before. Like, hey, how's school going? How are you feeling? How are your relationship with your friends? You know, right. just having these open conversation with or these dialogues with your kids that you never had before. So it just right. go back to finding that blessing and gaining something out of tragedy or out of grief. Mm-hmm. And even like with people that lost their, you know, lost businesses and everything like that, it caused them to rethink wow. business. Mm-hmm. When we were going through the pandemic, you, I mean, you had to think, okay, um, mm-hmm. you know, especially if you were brick and mortar, you had to figure out, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to go online right now. <laughs> no, for <laughs> real. Trying to figure out how to go online because it's like we got to make money, we got to pay our bills. Look, so, Nikki, Nikki hey. it, it was real. It was yeah. real. COVID. COVID was real, you know, for a lot of people, Mm -hmm. COVID was, uh, it was a hot mess, you know, it was a lot of heartache and for other people, you know, they took it as a way to come up, you know, Mm -hmm. but it's all opportunity, you know, found a way. They seen the opportunity. Like, yes, a lot of people lost their jobs, but a lot of people needed to, needed to lose their jobs and let their jobs go in order for them to invest in a business that they've been thinking about for the longest. Right. Right. It's stressful. It's yeah, just, a lot of people was getting yeah. these checks, and they was like, "Hey, I got this is an opportunity and time. I'm about to start investing in this business idea that I had." Mm-hmm. You know, yep. some people probably was inspired by a death of the family. Like, dang, my grandma always told me to, you know, do this business, go start that restaurant. Time is of the essence. You know, it, it allowed us, I think, too, to slow down and say, okay, I'm going to take it 24 hours at a time. I'm going to focus on what I have right now yeah. and what I can do. How can I help, you know, other people, my mm-hmm. family, et cetera. So if yeah. you just joined us, um, we talked about the five mm-hmm. stages earlier. The five stages yeah. are denial, um, bargaining, anger, mm-hmm. depression, and acceptance. And so I want you guys to put in the chat, if you had a significant loss of any kind, doesn't matter what it is, tell me what stage. Denial, yeah. we have bargaining, we have anger, depression, mm-hmm. and also I lost the other one. Um uh acceptance. There we go. <laughs> put it, the put hardest it thing I'm trying to see. Um, because there's two different types of grief. We're gonna move into that now, and it's prolonged grief and there's complicated grief. Right. So complicated grief is more intense, okay? Mm-hmm. It's often debilitating. Um, so it feels like you cannot move, you're kind of stuck. You may have a difficulty accepting the loss. Okay, and then you may be preoccupied with thoughts and memories of the deceased. You may deal with anger, guilt, depression, anxiety, and have difficulty functioning. So a lot of us are dealing with complicated grief. But if you remember the stats, there's quite a few of us that have prolonged grief, which is what I'm going to talk about now. And prolonged grief is it lasts longer. It can last up to six months or more. Wow. The thing to remember is that it's it's not time sensitive, right? Because everybody has to deal with life, has to deal with loss, has to deal with triggers. So sometimes you may be out and about and you get triggered. And so your grief just sometimes it will feel like it started all over again. So it lasts a long time, um, more uh, more than six months. And then it has gives you a feeling of numbness or emptiness. Sometimes you can feel like you have a detachment and difficulty mm-hmm. experiencing positive emotions. So you you literally feel like you have lost yourself. Yes. You have long grief. So wow. make sure that you um, you know, know the difference between the two, I think can sometimes help people. And yes. I'll just this is an opportunity to say, make you know, the advice that we give are strategies and we talk about solutions, yes. we talk about real mental health issues and concerns, yes. right? And so thank you, Jojo. Make sure that you check in, you get medical advice, you talk to a doctor, you go to a therapist and you get a diagnosis for whatever's going on within your body. So, you know, I'm not saying you have prolonged grief or complicated grief, but it is worth checking into, especially if you feel like you've been dealing with this for longer than six months. Yes. So, Nikki, before we go on commercial break, uh, I'm going to take some time to answer some of these great questions. 
Okay. Uh, so we have this one right here. I would like to answer first. You want to go ahead, Nikki? Okay. How do you get others to understand your thought process without making them think you're trying to force them, even though you're just passionate? Mm -hmm. um, thought process mm -hmm. about question. assuming mm. about grief. Are we talking about grief there? Yeah. I'm assuming we're talking about grief. Okay. Wait. So we're talking. Wait, where he he said something else. I come from a multiracial family. So I feel that there will be no. no. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, thank you for for clarification. For that clarification. I just I believe transparency. Just mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're in a relationship that's multiracial, um, just making sure that you're sharing your narrative with that person, yes. and understand that they may not ever understand, because mm -hmm. even if they were the same, this is my opinion the mm -hmm. same ethnicity as you they still may not understand yeah i don't know if if um let me overanalyze this was on when i talked about my children going through an experience a loss and mm -hmm. each of them dealt with it in different ways and it affected them in different ways you know as they went through that that tough situation so mm -hmm. um one i felt put on some weight one was dealing with anxiety one was mm -hmm. choosing wrong in terms of relationships and mm -hmm. all of that and so um, sometimes just knowing that the person may not fully understand, you just do your best to explain it to them. Um, and then remember, especially when you're talking about relationships, remember what brought you together in the first place. You know, I'm assuming yes. it's love and attraction and alignment there. So if that's the case, mm -hmm. then that's a beautiful thing. Oh, know? yeah. Um, them not fully understanding you may come with time yes. and um, allow them to see you and your experiences through your lens and how you can do that is just you know making them more aware you know mm -hmm. making them more aware education is is lovely it's knowledge oh, power love that. You know? so good mm -hmm. question good question good. i you. like this one right here nikki thank you for answering that mm -hmm. being disconnected from my students was depressing for me until i reached the acceptance stage Woo! Very good. Thank you. Thank you for mm -hmm. one for the service you provide for our kids. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's big. That's really big, especially being disconnected from the students. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard that's sometimes the kids need that connection because they're not getting it when they're at home. So mm -hmm. when they come to school and they have a great teacher that can connect with them, that can really mm -hmm. help them with their performance in school. Because now, like, say if a kid is dealing with, a lot of times when kids are dealing with, like, PTSD and stuff, that can get in a, um, their way of, like, learning. It can really yeah. affect their learning abilities because their nervous system and their brain is not able to do and comprehend or contain, I mean, retain the information that's given or that's been taught to them. Right. So when you have a, a beautiful spirit that you can come to school to and you create this beautiful environment and you allow the kids to feel safe and feel love, mm -hmm. then that right there, that little act of kindness can help reset their nervous system in a way where they can be able to receive or be able to um, retain the information that you're trying to give them or trying to teach them. Right. And just like she's saying about the acceptance stage, you know, it's just that awareness, right? And it goes back to what I was sharing earlier. In order for you to have lost something, mm -hmm. you have had it. Mm -hmm. So just cherishing yes. the moments that we get with people because it's it, sometimes it can be so short and mm -hmm. focusing on loving people while you have them, loving yes. people while they're in your space, loving people while you're, you know, with them. Yes. I think it's really very beneficial. Mm -hmm. And you know, if we can all focus on that and the gratitude of having people in our lives that we love and care about, then that's, mm -hmm. that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is really beautiful. And um, I just want to say something was just on my heart. Please don't stop being you. Mm. Like, don't stop being you because it's the you that's helping to make the change that's impacting the kids' lives. Right. Like, whatever that's causing you to be re like disconnected from yourself and disconnected from these kids, like, it's okay to have boundaries, right, Nikki? Mm -hmm. You want to have a healthy boundary with the kids because you don't want to be too connected with them to the point where mm -hmm. it's affecting your personal life, but you right. want to have a good balance of connection with the kids. And it's that connection that you have to kids and by you just putting a little dose of your love and who you are, your personality, that can help change the kids' lives. Because I know when I was in the seventh grade, I was dealing with so much. I went from gang banging to being an honor roll student. You were an honor roll 
<laughs> like, I, like seriously. Okay. Like, you was in a game? Yeah, like I went because yeah. I because my I was going through so much cool. as a kid. Yeah, like, my niece got murdered. It was broadcast all over the in, not the internet, but it was all over um the news. It was on the radio station. It was in the newspaper. I had mm -hmm. teachers coming up to me, pulling me to the side, breaking like, "Oh, tell me what happened." You know what I'm saying? And my mm -hmm. my niece was murdered. She was six years old. I'm 11 mm -hmm. years old, and I got teachers pulling me to the she side, trying to find a way to cope. Right? Yeah. So you have all of this stuff going on, right? So I was stuck in the anger. I'm so angry because it's like, why nobody giving me love? I don't want to be questioned. I don't want to constantly remember these things, right? But the same teachers that caused more trauma in me than the actual event, another teacher that led by example, she was the one that saved me. Mm. She was the only person outside of my family or even outside of my family that set me down and showed me tough love. And she said, you know what? Don't no man want no ugly, want no dumb woman. Hmm. Like your behavior, cause it was getting like, I had PTSD and it was affecting my way of learning. Cause mm -hmm. my mind wasn't in, it wasn't present. It wasn't where I was at. It was like, mm -hmm. I'm constantly thinking about what happened with my niece. I'm constantly thinking about what's going on at home. Constantly thinking about, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah, at a lot of, right? I don't even mind. Mm -hmm. All of these distractions, right? Mm -hmm. But the moment I met somebody that believed in me and they didn't see me just being a, a kid acting out, trying to get attention and all that stuff, she saw me. She was able to connect with me in the way that saved me and I trusted her enough to allow her to guide me to the right path and until this day that was in the seventh grade until this day this woman mm -hmm. went me through middle school high school and college and now me getting ready yeah. to get married wow. so so don't 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 change who you are but sorry about going over <laughs> um, but we'll be right back we're gonna have a quick commercial break if you guys need to grab a drink of water or you know, you need to grab a quick pen and paper real quick. Make sure you go ahead and do that. But we'll be right back with more for you. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. It's Billy Carson, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. I want to talk to you about a very special event coming up July 30th, 2023. The Forbidden Conscious Awards, the first annual event of its type. We're going to honor people who have been contributing to the conscious community for decades. People that you know and love that have helped you get to higher levels of thought and consciousness and awareness. And guess what? It's time to give them their flowers while they're still alive. It's going to be a live in-person event, but seats are going to sell out very fast. You want to make sure you're there in person for this amazing level event. It's going to be above the Oscars, above the Grammys. And guess what? You can help vote for the winners. Voting is available on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. And the categories are going to be social media influencer, podcast slash radio host, TV host, actor, director, producer, entrepreneurs, health and wellness, philanthropists, authors, field researchers, archaeologists, space anomaly hunters, and of course, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And you want to be there in person because I'm going to be speaking. That's right. I'll be your keynote speaker that night at the Forbidden Conscious Awards. If you want to come to a mini conference, this is the place to be because I'm going to give you the knowledge that night as well as performances. We have celebrity guests performing. We'll have a halftime show where we're actually going to perform music for you. And don't forget about the pre-event mixer where if you buy a box seat, you'll be in the VIP section and you also have private access to a VIP mixer with celebrity guests. Shake hands, break bread, network, and then walk the red carpet with us and take amazing photos. It's going to be a night to remember. You don't want to forget this. And you help vote by going to ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Go to the Conscious Awards link. You can text in a vote for who you want for any category, as well as if you're out of the country, you can use the web form ballot to still vote for anyone you think is worthy of being honored that night. Make sure you hurry up and get your tickets because they're selling out very fast. I want to see you there. Forbidden Conscious Awards 2023. Man, yes. I can't wait. I know. Oh, I know. man. I'm excited for the Conscious Awards. I can't wait. Oh, it's so interesting. I was going to ask you to put her, her comment up. Wow. Sheila. See, we connected. We connected, we girl. Connected. We connected. I was going to go ahead and ask you, like, let's talk to this one. 
Like, yeah, thank Sheila, you. thank you so thank much you. for um, for commenting. And I just want to, first of all, give my condolences mm -hmm. um, to your loss. And mm -hmm. I want to ask oh, you, hopefully, yes, hopefully you have um, reached out to a therapist, if you, especially if you need closure. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, get some counseling um, as you go through the process, because one thing that, you know, it's, it's not time sensitive. It can take a long time. It can take, you know, maybe for the rest of your life. But there's some things that we're going to talk about. Stay tuned because we're going to talk about some different strategies and some solutions, some things yeah. that you can do to manage it mm -hmm. as you, you know, continue to cope. Yeah. But, um, but yes, I know that it's, it's definitely not easy. Um, going through any type of loss, especially one that's significant. So thank you for your comment. And mm -hmm. hopefully something that we say tonight will be helpful to you um, as you continue to heal. So, um, yes. Oops, sorry about that. But yes, um, I think that's perfect. Like, well, I didn't mean to. I was like, we lost her. <laughs> nope, I'm here. I'm here. But I was listening. But that really did touch me. Thank you for sharing your story as well. And you're welcome to everyone. Um, like we do have to understand what I learned was our stories is not ours to keep, it's meant to share. And yes. when we become comfortable and we learn how to love ourselves and that's our and we stop judging ourselves, mm -hmm. then we're able to share our story and to help heal the world because we all going through something, we all experience something, and it's power in our stories. Oh yeah. It's meant to share, but it took me a minute. But going to going back to like really talking about grief. I think this next topic that we're going to talk about, which is <laughs> what to say, Nikki's going to break that down. I think this is perfect for people right now that's going, that's grieving, or if you know someone grieving, please take notes of this and please like really share this um, our episode with people because this 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 is serious. This is big. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on in the world, y'all, and this is very powerful. So, um, Nikki, I'm about to pull up the slide for you. Okay. And, um, I know she's about to about to break down what to say to what someone. To say. We talked about earlier what not to say. Now we're going to talk about some some research, some things that we found that you can say to your loved ones as they're going through, or to yourself even. Mm -hmm. So I is missing from there, but I'm sorry for your loss is one of them. So that's mm -hmm. letting them know it kind of helps them understand that you do care yeah. about what they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here for you if you need anything. So that's just confirmation, letting people know that um, that you're you're there. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine how difficult this must be be for you. Mm -hmm. um, allows them to understand that you know you don't think that it's no big deal. You don't think that um, you would handle things differently. Like you're on it, being honest that you couldn't mm -hmm. even imagine what they may be experiencing because they're not you. At the end of the mm -hmm. day, they're a completely different person. So respecting. The fact that they're different than you and acknowledging what they may be going through. Mm -hmm. um, would you like to talk about it? It's really good because it, you know, it opens up the, the floor for them. You're not forcing them. You're actually inviting them to share with you whatever it is that they want to share to their comfort level, not to yours, but to theirs. Mm -hmm. So would you like to talk about it? And if they say no, being OK with their no, because obviously mm -hmm. they're not ready yet or maybe they don't have the words to say. It's such a significant mm -hmm. loss that they're still trying to figure out where, the, you know, where they're at in terms of how their, their mindset is. Yes. Then take all the time that you need, you know, giving people a pass mm -hmm. that you understand that it does take time. You know, you don't know exactly what stage they're in and you're OK with that, that you're there. Um, I remember when share positive memories about the person. So that's really good because it allows you to think about the fun times and the good memories. That again, we didn't have to experience, but because we did, we know that, you know, this was meant to be Yes. Um, that relationship that no matter how long or short it was having that person in your life, no matter how long or short it was having that pet in your life, having that job, having that car, that home for whatever season of time, we know mm -hmm. that that was a part. It was a part of your story because it did happen. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking of you is another one and that can be any of these can be sent via text of course it's great if you get on the phone because it's more personal mm -hmm. um, great if you can see them face to face because it's more personal but then understanding that people do have boundaries with that mm -hmm. and sometimes they it just takes them time to want to be able to communicate with you again because again mm -hmm. they're still trying to navigate stuff 
So going back to Sheila's comment and anybody else that um, in the chat that is having a significant loss that they're still mourning from and dealing with, there is an exercise. It's called um, the Total Truth Letter. Mm. The Total Truth I Letter love that. by Jack Canfield, who mm -hmm. is huge in the mental health space. And so what it is is sentence stems that you basically read and then you answer as if you're talking to that person. Some of you mm -hmm. guys that are listening may be familiar with the empty chair, which is when you can sit in a chair and then you have an empty chair in front of you and you pretend like you're having a conversation, some closure with that person. Mm -hmm. um, some people can do that through journal work, too. And mm -hmm. I lost my birth father. Um, what was it? Seven years ago. And he. And oh, I, wow. Yeah. Well, we didn't know that. That close. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't that close because I was raised by my stepfather. But mm -hmm. I remember at the end of his life, he had cancer. I knew he was dying and he only had a couple months left. So we I flew out there with my aunt mm -hmm. and I had that closure conversation with him. And one of the questions I asked him was, why wasn't he in my life and why he didn't raise me? Because I didn't understand that. Right. Even as mm -hmm. an adult. And he said the most beautiful thing to me that I still hold dear. And what he said to me is that he knew because of the lifestyle he had chosen, he wasn't fit at that time to be able to raise me. He couldn't give money to me. He was, you know, heavily involved in so many different things, which gave me a lot of peace. But mm. I bring that up because I did the total truth letter, which is what I'm recommending to you guys look up. I did that several times um, in the mirror and I just practiced and pretended as if, you know, he was there and just having that closure conversation with him. And, you know, each time you do it, you cry, you do all that, give yourself permission to release whatever emotions show up, whether you're a man, a woman or what have you. Men mm -hmm. cry, boys cry, girls cry, anybody can cry. Release those those emotions that are tied to that. But that's really good. Yeah. It's called The Total Truth Letter by Jack Canfield. Mm -hmm. By Jack Canfield. So, um, but yeah, so that's an, an example of something you can do. And you can do it as many times as you need to, because each time you do it, I did it a five, five years apart and I still had more that came up that I wanted to get off my chest. Wow. So, yeah. It, it so gives you good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's what we're going to go into now is just going over the um, just going over some activities and some things that you can do at home or with loved ones that can help you overcome grief or help you get through grief. I know one that really helped me, Nikki, was um, breath work. Mm. I like doing some I'm still um, learning about breath work. What which breath work? What type do you prefer? Oh man, it's so many different types. Huh? I know about box breathing. In for four, hope. For yeah, four, box breathing, breathing is good, but it's like so many different type of like mm -hmm. um techniques to like breath work. Like it will blow your mind. <laughs> I, know, I know. I went I to a one time. We were on the mat and we were breathing oh. and. All these different. I yeah. never knew how powerful breath work was until I really started doing it on myself. But the okay. thing that helped me to start doing it is uh, I was grieving. I was grieving the loss of having to release a friend, hmm. and it was hurting me so bad. I was just angry. I was once again my favorite phase. Mm -hmm. I'm always stuck in the angry phase, mm -hmm. and I was just so angry to the point where I noticed that it was coming out. Like mm -hmm. on people that didn't deserve it. Can I ask oh. you what you were angry about? Um, you know, um, sometimes because I think people may need to hear that. Like, yeah. give themselves permission to be angry for a period of time. So, what yeah. what do you think was the root of the anger? The root of the anger is um, it felt like a death because I know the person for twenty one years. You got twenty one years of friendship. And then you realize uh, out of that 21 years of friendship, you experience so much betrayal, mm. so much. And then it's like sometimes we have these high expectations from for people in our lives. Right. And sometimes we yes, forget girl. that they're human. Like we really do. We forget that they're human. Girl, you know, that's the thing. You know, like we really do yes. we forget that they're human and we put them in these. On these pedestals, just mm -hmm. like some of these people we look up to, we put them on a pedestal. In the moment they show us or they do us wrong, we be so quick to blame them. But at the end mm -hmm. of the day, the anger is not, it's not them, it's us. Mm -hmm. It's us. We have the mm -hmm. moment we start realizing that we all are human beings and we're having this human experience, right? Sometimes it's unspoken expectations too. We, yes, we believe that this so other real. person is going to be able to do X, Y, Z, but we haven't communicated that to them. 
Yeah. We just want them to know how to love us. And Absolutely. I'm not saying that's your case, but sometimes that is the case where it's that communication piece I feel like is missing a lot of times where it's like, yeah. no, you know, maybe, you know, mending fences with the person is a possibility just by communicating with them. Even though there's toxicity there, do you feel like you guys communicated well throughout the course of the 21 years? So the thing was, this whole time, mm -hmm. I thought this person was like so real. I thought it was the realest person I ever knew in my life. I told this person everything about me, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like we get stuck in these roles. And that's where a lot of friendships and stuff and relationships fail because people grow. And when people yeah. grow, the roles uh, part change, too. right? They grow apart, <laughs> you know? And I feel like in our friendship, I started to really growing to the point to the point where I outgrown this person. So I used to go to her about everything, right? Mm. Everything. Then it got to the point where I started solving my own mess. Mm. I started solving it. So now I'm coming to you. I'm not coming to you with problems no more. I'm coming with you, coming to you with solutions. And now I'm trying to have real conversations that's outside of my mess and my drama. Right. Okay. But this person is still playing this one role that she don't need to play no more. Yeah. You know, and they stuck there. So the moment some people feel like they're not needed, it's scary and it mm -hmm. drives them crazy. And then sometimes when people are in fight, people not mm -hmm. familiar with the flight and fight. But when mm -hmm. you're in fight, you do some things that's harmful because you just trying to you're in survival mode. Even if it takes yourself by running away. Yeah. Yeah, you're trying to save their, their friendship. And that, it ended up separating us. It ended mm -hmm. up destroying us to the point where I, I don't know. It'll be so a does miracle. It, does it help now to think about it and say, you know, that you're appreciative or grateful for the good times? Are you able to oh, get to I am. It takes a while to get to that point even. So I'm not saying you're yeah. supposed to be there because, you know, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, no, a stage. it's a stage. Once I was able, I feel like the anger is what did I what I needed to get out of the friendship. Mm. Right. Once I was able to finally like have the energy, like that anger gave me everything I need to just hop out and stop making excuses for this person and stop started, making, girl. Yeah. That anger was like, uh uh, I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, you know, so once I was able to use my anger to help me get out of it. Then I was far enough from it and I was separate from the situation. I was able to sit down. And that's when I did the breath work and the trauma release on myself. And I was able to Good. really, hey, Jordan, I was able to really be able to find a real issue. I'm going to tell you something. Having a friendship end, whatever way it ends, is pain. Oh. OK, yeah, <laughs> it's painful, yeah. especially when you talk about a long term friendship. Sometimes it's, 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 it's like more it painful to do it than like a, like breaking up with a loved one. Yeah, I mean, you know, like and there's child. no really no comparison. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that it, people may think, oh, yeah, that's not a big deal. That is a big deal it is in big there. Deal. And I understand because it's like you love this person mm -hmm. and you still want them in your life in some capacity. But then mm -hmm. because, like you said, sometimes we outgrow them or different yeah. things happen. Um, it can be a challenge. So yeah. let's get to the solution. Let's Ooh. tell them the strategies. Right, let's do it. It's a good step. Right. <laughs> so, so let's go to we're gonna go to the solutions real quick. One second. So we do have some coping, more ways to cope with grief. Yes. Um, so so that one has uh, quite a bit on there, but some of the activities that we can look at is taking up a new hobby, mm -hmm. spending time with loved ones, volunteering, traveling um yeah. writing um or creating art mm -hmm. exercising attending um support groups listening to music yeah practicing mindfulness he can help all of those um and you want to talk about honoring yeah so with honoring we can um create um a memorial you can donate to a cause write a letter create memory a memory box which is one of my favorites i love that creating a memory box it can be fun and help build up some joy um keep a journal a lot of times um like i write to my niece i write like letters to her and say things to her that you know would have said to her if she was here so that always keep you connected and feel a little bit closer um celebrate their birthdays or special occasions. That's something me and my family do every year of my niece's birthday. We get the balloons 
we um we get cake we come together we have a good time like as if she was here um oh, okay. do a balloon release we do do the balloon release as well um mm -hmm. share stories and memories create a scholarship or an award so you got some extra money you can do that but that is a great idea absolutely yes Okay. And the other what the other column is just quotes or what have you, but yeah, it's just a couple of quotes. But mm -hmm. now we have a couple of other things like essential oils and teas that we can break down with you guys real quick. Yes, yeah, so this is my favorite slide of <laughs> all. My favorite, favorite, favorite. I'm gonna I'll talk about the Look. herbs. You got the plants. Yes. Okay. okay. So herbs. Um, Saint John's Ward is one. Now, with these, you can take them as teas. You can uh, diffuse them as essential oils. All these, you know, there's different ways to be able to intake those. Some of them may come as a supplement. You just have to check and see. And I always, always, always say check with your medical doctor. Please, people. Sure there's nothing that conflicts with what we're saying here. So do not take herbal medication unless you check with your doctor and, you know, everything's on the up and up. So St. John's Ward is popular for depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Lavender is a has calming properties that promotes relaxation. So I love lavender. I actually use lavender every single day. I put it on my wrist and I rub my wrist together. And then sometimes I'll put it behind my ears as well. So it has calming properties and it promotes relaxation. Sometimes I'll have a lavender tea mm -hmm. at night. As Ooh. well as the next one, chamomile is really good as a tea. That's my favorite. <laughs> Most relaxation and it's helpful to sleep. So if you are having some trouble going to sleep at night, then you can always um, use chamomile as an option too. And mm. then um, holy basil is um, comes in a tea form as well. It's an aptogenic, aptogenic, and it's a it helps with stress, anxiety, and mood. And then we've got passion flower, which mm. I hadn't tried passion flower yet or squirrel cap. But no. passion flower is a calming herb. It helps with anxiety, stress, and sleep. And then skull cap um, is a nervine herb, and that can help with stress, anxiety, and nervousness, as well as sleep. So those are some good um, herbal um, remedies for what you may be experiencing. Yes. And it may not take it away completely. So if you want to seek medical advice, you may you know, be on some antidepressants or what have you for a time period. Um, you know, whatever you need, you know, make sure that you check with a doctor to see. Yes, definitely. And then we have plants that may help. So aloe vera plant, which is one of my favorites, is um, really good to promote emotional healing and a sense of comfort. That's definitely a really good one. You can use aloe vera plant for so many different ways and di different mm, things. Mm. Like for your skin, it. it's very healing for your skin, your hair. Oh yeah. my God, it's amazing. And even just like be having it in the house is really good for the environment. Peace Lily. Um, it's an air purifying properties and help improve the air quality of your home, calmness and tranquility. That is also a really good one. Rosemary improves memory and concentration. So that's a big one. I know rosemary, the seasoning is really good mm, too. Mm. Um, oh, they, yeah. do, they do have rosemary tea, which is amazing. Oh, I, yeah. love it. I love it. <laughs> oh my God. Um, honeysuckle. Um, it's an emotional healing and sense of comfort. Then we have sage. I Everybody love my sage. sage. <laughs> Y'all get that sage. It's like mm -hmm. transformation. Mm -hmm. Yes, clean out your house, especially when you're dealing with depression. It's good to just get the sage, walk around the house, and just cleanse it out. Even if you do like a manifest manifestation or you do a prayer or a mantra, whatever it is, get your sage. It's good for um, purification, emotional healing, and a sense of comfort. And then jasmine. Whew, I love me some jasmine tea. It's mm. good for sleep, relaxation, and anxiety. So definitely get on that, guys. I really hope you all enjoyed the show tonight. Enjoy yes. the tips. Like, Let's it, read a couple more pleasure. comments. I know um, Maria's on here. Hey, girl. Oh, I can't Maria see Maria C. You see her? Hey, Maria, what's going on? Yes, this comes on time for Good. me. I was upset missing my dad and two best males that passed away. 
Mm, yes, take care of yourself, that. queen. You know, we uh, gave a lot of strategies and some solutions to what you're yes. experiencing. So I hope something that we said tonight really resonated with you and, and will help you. Yes. Um, may they rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Then we have yes. this other one. We do that and we all go to his grave site on the day of his passing. Oh, that's oh. so sweet. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, just those memories that you know are so important in doing they those are. memorial type activities too. <laughs> Jordan love those um the Vera I plants. Care. Yes, <laughs> me too. They're my favorite. I'm growing one too. I'm growing a lavender plant too. I'm so excited. And rose. Oh you know, I didn't find rose on the list, but rose oil is really, really good now. Yeah, and don't I'm, you have an oil? I have an oil, yes, and I'm going to be sharing that. I'll probably share it next time. But yes, yes. Do you have the link in the bio. I'm not sure. I don't remember. If no, I need to. Put, I need to get the link. Yes, you guys yes. definitely want to check out Nikki's oil. It's amazing. Like, yes. oh my god, we're gonna talk about that our next show next Wednesday. We definitely will. Um, we Roderick, definitely will. thank you for like popping up. We love you. We love you. So. Mm -hmm. If anybody have any comments or anything, please let us know if you have any last questions. That's awesome. But let's let's see. We have a few minutes. Jordan, thank you. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Jordan. Yeah, we appreciate you so much. All right. But um, it looks like that's it. So for tonight, please share this um, episode of it if you found it any help. Or if it helped you tonight, if you learned anything, please share this to a loved one that you feel that might need this information or even a friend or even just save this um, video or like mm -hmm. it or share. So just thank you for being here today. We appreciate you all. Anything and we wanted to give you guys some slides, too, because I know sometimes we're just, you know, we're talking about so much information. Um, you can always screenshot it. And that way you mm -hmm. have it for your own, you know, to be able to keep it yourself. Um, please screenshot these. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Sometimes you forget and it's like, okay, what did they say again? So these are all tools <laughs> and different things that we found that can help you as you navigate this. But just know you're not alone, that there's mm -hmm. people in place that can help you talk. You know, there's things you, you, you know, can do to, mm -hmm. to feel better. That's the whole goal, right? Yes. That's the strategies that we need. So there's, there's solutions out here, which means there's hope. So don't give oh, yeah. up guys. And you're not alone. That's why me and Nikki is here to help and provide you with the resources and tools that you need to support you to have a healing lifestyle. Yes. Thank right. you guys for being here. Your support, your comments, all of that. That means so much to us in the Forbidden Knowledge family. Yes. We are growing. There's so many people coming on the platform now and the network, and it is just amazing. I love, and I always say this, you know, you know I say this all the time, is that it's so diverse. You know, you can get a little bit of everything that you need right here on this one network. Like, yes. it's so powerful. You know, Kika just started her new podcast, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's on business and franchising and all of that and making money. You know, we yes. all know how to make money and keep it. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. We didn't talk about the grief of losing money. Uh, no, <laughs> look, look, that's a, whole nother, and that's a whole nother episode. But yeah. you know, finding ways to rebuild and to gain income again, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you know, make sure you tune into her her um, podcast as well. Yes, good yes. stuff. All right, well, until next got time, guys, take it easy. Love you, and tune in next week. Love y'all. Bye. <laughs>